Hi there, this is Tracy. And tonight we're gonna to talk about your pets and a narcissist. And I've done some research on this and I've got some personal experiences to share with you. But I want you to first know that I've seen a lot of videos and a lot of material out there where people are talking about they either love your pets or they hate your pets. And what I want you to understand is that like a narcissist, any particular thing can be on the spectrum. So they can be the ones that hate your pet or love your pet or love their pet. So it can, it can go anywhere in between. And you have to know that just by listening to the different stories, you're going to relate to something if you've had a pet in your life while you've had a narcissist. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the way that they can harm you with a pet, think of if you are someone that has a pet, cat, dog, goldfish, I don't really care. Um, if you have a pet that you care deeply about, it can become a weapon to a narcissist because as we know, they attack what we treasure most. And it certainly isn't going to happen in the beginning, right? Because that's the love bombing stage. That's the stage when they are going to be morphing themselves into exactly what you like. If you like dogs and, and you like Great Danes, that's perfectly fine with them. When in reality, they, can't hold the responsibility of having a pet. That's one way, right? The other way is, is if they um, take on this pet, dog or cat or whatever, to being like their child. It is more important than any other human. And if you're in a relationship with them, it's more important than you. Um, I'll use the example of my mother. My mother has always had dogs. So I grew up with dogs, mostly Cocker Spaniels and, and little dogs. I never had a big dog. So I wouldn't, I don't know what to do with one. Um, there are certain types like golden retrievers that I just take to. They're soft, they're warm, they're kind. Um, but I, I have fears over big dogs like Dobermans and German Shepherds they can sense that I'm not comfortable with it. And, and they rightly um, try to show their aggression towards me. And I think that's always stopped me from wanting a big dog. And they can be cruel to your animal in so many ways. They can let your pet out when it's unsupervised and just leave it there and then claim they, they didn't know anything about it. Um, they can love bomb your pet and turn the pet against you. I've seen that happen where, you know, you love the pet, but they're going to do everything they can so that it creates a jealousy. It's triangulating you with your pet. And the more that you're loving your pet, the more that they're going to use this pet against you in the end. In the beginning, they're going to, you know, play with your dog, play with your cat, everything's going to be fine. But then one day, they're gonna wake up and they're not want, gonna want any cat hair. And the cat's doing this, and, the, and they could just like throw like a narcissistic rage at the pet when the pet did nothing. The dog was barking and they lose it. They have no patience. And if you are giving the pets more attention than them, that's gonna be jealousy. It's simple. They're just going to, to not like the pet because they have to compete against it. I have a couple of examples. So as I started to say before, my mom always had a pet, always had a dog. And as long as I can remember, the animals were more important than my sisters and I. My mother took her dogs to the dentist, sat them in her lap took them into the grocery stores and took them on planes um, pretending that the dogs were, you know, safety dogs or, you know, dogs that were allowed on planes, medical dogs. And what she was doing was she was creating a jealousy between me and my sisters and the dog, which 
if you look at my life later in life, um, I've always had cats, but um, I think I was pitted against the dog for so long that I became jealous and I didn't give all. I knew that I couldn't give all. My ex-husband's family had Dobermans, big, big Dobermans. That was their like security system for the house. And um, the father would take the dog to get trained and they had electrical collars and he had a buzzer and he could electrically shock the dog if the dog was going too close to the edge of the yard. And, and this was like a common practice with them. The dog was very aggressive. The dog um, didn't like me. And as soon as I would come into the house, he would growl and, rawr, and bark and scream. And I would be afraid to walk up the stairs of the house because the dog would be there and like dripping from the mouth. And, you know, all they would do is like, boom, boom, get away. They fed this dog with their hand. They No meal did this dog ever have to eat out of a bowl. They would mush it in the bowl and then hand feed the dog. And... They were showing how important this dog was to them and, and how unimportant both my husband and his sister and ultimately us were to them compared to the pet. My ex-husband always said he wanted a dog. We had a cat. He bought two cats when we first met. And um, he always said he wanted a dog. But I knew from his behavior that he wouldn't even remember to take out garbage or change a tissue box or a toilet paper roll, that if we got a dog, that I would be doing all the work. And frankly, I don't want that responsibility at this point in my life. So the very first thing he did when he got his new supply, which I think is his new wife, was they got a puppy. And um, they, she kept trying to friend me on Pinterest and Facebook and all these things, and she would be showing pictures of the puppy living at mommy and daddy's house, his parents' house. Um, Look, we have a new puppy. And so, you know, rubbing it into my face, everything about um, this dog, to just say, see, I got a dog and you stopped me. Well, I never stopped him. He just never did it but I was to blame for him not having a dog. So they can use them against you. They can show the dog or cat more love than they show you. They can hurt the animal. What I want you to know and I want you to remember is dogs and cats are very smart. Watch how they interact with your narcissist. See how they treat your person, your narcissist, right? Are they, do they like them or do they back away and are they scared of them? Um, I had a cat once um, and I had a roommate. This is going back a long time ago, but she had a boyfriend that would come up on the weekends and, and my cat, who was like the sweetest thing in the whole world, my cat did not like this guy. And of course I was not knowing what he did when I wasn't there, but um, every time he started doing it, my cat, when this guy would come over. First, he pooped in his luggage. He left it open and the cat went in and pooped it. He'd never done anything like that and, and never ever since then. Um, and then the second time he did something was he uh, pooped right on their bed. And again, not the normal cat behavior, but he knew that this guy was a jerk. <laughs> um, you know, we just have to watch for our pet's reaction to them as well because they're going to show us if we just listen. So this is Tracy. That's all I've got. Narcissists and our pets. If you would like to learn more about narcissist abuse, I have a um, website and I also have a, and I'll put the links below, I also have a support group on Facebook and um we're growing. We have about 350 so members now. So we invite you to join in the conversation and um, that would be fun to see you. So uh, I look forward to hearing from you and that's all I've got. Thank you.